that it is an unusually physical. Oh my God! This you're gonna really you're gonna start the clock while I'm talking about the uh, the physical maternal bond. Okay, fine. Let's do this. I disagree with his executive ruling there. I was enjoying that conversation, but Mike Ryan wants his football information. So, tell me what's going on with the Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, we talk a lot, obviously, about the D offense and the wide receivers dropping passes. This is a big narrative. They're dependent entirely on Travis Kelsey, maybe Rasheed Rice. That is a serious problem. But another thing that I think is flying a little bit on the radar is over the last few weeks, the defense, which started the season so elite, performances declined a little bit. They got shredded by play action by the Green Bay Packers. That defensive line is not getting quite the same push they were earlier in the year. So they seem to be suffering. Splash. Do you find it weird that Lamar Jackson and two are still healthy, but they're the only quarterbacks who are still healthy? That's a great point, and I really hope it's something that we bring up in the future when we talk about like narratives and quarterbacks and being injury prone and dual threats and all of that. Because there was so much hemming and hawing. Should we pay Lamar Jackson? He's injury prone. Tua Tagovailoa. You know, can he make it through a season? And we are right now here in the season. I think it really sheds light on the fact that quarterback injuries tend to be really random, and we get really mad about the fact that there are a lot of backups right now starting in the AFC. We say we got to change the rules. You don't have to respect the splash. You can talk through it a little bit. Always. A little bit. No, it's like the bell on PTI. She doesn't have to respect the splash if she does not want to. Splash. That's not something that's a thing. If I can't hit the quarterback in the head and if I can't hit him in the legs and if I can't hit him at all, then why is it they're all getting hurt? Well, it's kind of what I was just saying at the last point, which is that it tends to be really random. By the way, it feels like, you know, like all these quarterbacks are hurt and it's worse than it's ever been. But when you actually look at the statistics, um, the percentage of starts you're getting from quarterbacks who started week one is actually highest it's been in years. It's just very concentrated in one conference. Um, obviously, that number will go up as the season goes on, but it's not like an unusually injury prone year. Are the Steelers... Are, oh, sorry about that. That's my fault. I beat are, the splash that time. Are yeah, the Steelers the any good? Should I stay in my deck, Dan? Again with the Bob Villa Splash. stuff. Again with the Bob Villa stuff. I don't understand why it is that I... Uh, via. I go Via. Answer my Are question. You guys, oh, about the Steelers? Uh, they're fine. They're not... Like, they're okay. They're, I would say, an average football team. I Obviously, the you know underlying numbers reflect that. There's a point difference. Nine and eight, that. baby. Just splash win. uh can you oh god they're playing tonight oh yeah give us a preview what uh, was that do you think ezekiel Elliott <laughs> will have fewer than 60 rushing yards i was looking at the i know there were the um, kind of meme went around because when they advertise these games they put up the two quarterbacks usually and i think they had belichick out for the patriots which who knows if he'll even be uh you know around with the the patriots next year but i saw they made a new one with bailey zappi and mitch trubisky and the looks on both their faces in the photoshop in the picture is it's, they're both like looking at the camera Splash. like are you really gonna watch this are you really gonna watch us what are we to do with how dreadful belichick's team looks uh, so this is going to, I feel like this is simmering right now, but it's going to obviously heat up at the end of the season when the Patriots have to make a decision and they're headed into the draft with potentially the number two pick. Is this the guy you want shepherding the future of the franchise? I think because of not just his record, but what he's done recently on defense, it makes sense to keep him, but only if you can get Splash. someone to intervene on the personnel side, because he's been a horrible GM over the last few years. Who's better, the Patriots or the Panthers? The Patriots. The Panthers are really, really bad. Splash. It's, it's really hard to watch. Uh, Bryce Young the other day at halftime, 47-yard line, his own 47-yard line, fourth and two, two seconds left. They didn't trust him to throw a Hail Mary, just threw it out of bounds. He can reach the end zone from there, correct? Uh... Bryce Young does not have a super strong arm. I don't think that's even one or like top 10 on the problems with the Carolina Panthers. This maybe it's top 10, but not top five on the problems with the Carolina Panthers. But yeah, it, it's not great. And when you watch him, it is one of those things where it was kind of, we were talking about earlier, the quarterback Splash. situation. It's just so hard to parse out responsibility because of the circumstances. Quit beating around the bush. Did the committee get it right? Uh, no, because Washington Splash. probably should have been one. That's right. But I don't care. Leave Michigan well, out. You agree Leave with Dan? Leave Michigan out. Is you, that, or Dan, has that been your take? I loved Washington all year. They're just fun. I love because their quarterback throws it down the field.
you know those videos the video of michigan reacting to alabama getting in over fsu where they're like it, it's really quite funny that was the opposite for me at home watching um, i was i was prepared to like fire up my washington was rob takes when i thought it was fsu but then when they said alabama i was like because uh, you because you feels right because you don't oh so you don't want you think out you too fear Alabama to expose a team that you think is good but was a 10 point underdog against the Ducks I would rather play Texas and Alabama as a Washington Huskies fan is that a and that's not Ooh. Texas slander it's it has something to, for me it's a little bit about the Nate the build of the teams um I think that they can just go toe-to-toe with them but Texas beat Alabama how can you say that one's better than the other I don't know what is that, that a is. Texas. I feel like a that was more of like was a, like a college football fan yeah. watching ESPN who feels slighted. Okay. That was a fine bomb caller. It didn't sound like it had a lot of South. Did it have a lot of South in it? Uh, when I didn't you, want to offend. It did. You know yeah. wearing that shirt. When you say that San Francisco has a particular set of skills to dismantle the uh, Eagles, who has the particular set of skills that would cause the problems for San Francisco? Dan kind of looks like the like guy in the Hallmark movie where his uh, significant other leaves to go to the big city and comes back and maybe he's, he runs like a Christmas tree farm now and they meet again and they fall in love and they and she has to make a decision. Does she want to go back to her big city life? So sweet home Alabama. Stay? His dad was Santa yeah. Claus the entire time. Splash. <laughs> That's a great answer. <laughs> I'll ask it again. Who gives the 49ers trouble? Uh, the well, I, I said this, but I'll, but I'll get into why. But the Baltimore Ravens, I think. Because when you look at the Niners, it's so hard to find problems with that team. They're so dominant. A couple of things, though. They actually do not have a very good run defense this year, particularly runs between the tackles, which is something Baltimore is very good at. Best rushing attack in football. And then defensively, um, I think Baltimore has the best defense in the NFL. And Splash. they also have an elite linebacker duo, which you need linebackers who can cover and tackle to play the San Francisco 49ers because of how multiple they are on offense. You mentioned Mike McDonald as someone that's Ooh. disguising uh, blitz schemes and coverages, yeah. and he's the Ravens defensive coordinator, and he's been someone that's really impressed you. What's another coach that we should uh, keep an eye out as these jobs start opening up? Ooh, um, I'll do a weird one, a very, um, I actually think, Arizona's offensive coordinator who was with Cleveland, Mike, Drew Petzing, has done a very good job this year. You really saw that with Josh Dobbs. And I actually think when you watch Kyler, the offense, which is very different from what Cliff Kingsbury ran, which is more of the air raid. This is more of like, we're going to put tight ends on the field. Uh, We're going to use more run actions. I think he's doing a lot with difficult circumstances. Mina, what do you think about the NFC South having a playoff committee to decide who gets in? Um, I don't know who would be the FS because it's really three teams you're deciding between. And I, yeah, actually, I don't, I don't mind that idea because I don't like, I don't want to see any of them particularly in the playoffs. So I think it would be better at the end to try to choose who would be the most entertaining. Uh, I really stopped respecting the construct of this, by the way. You did. I'm going to stop playing answering. (laughs) Yeah, I started started answering questions with like a normal pace and intonation. You decided we're putting Baker in. It was moving very fast and then it slowed down because uh, you can be jostled into always football comatose talk. Like there's no I, – I got to imagine – I don't know if your yeah. husband cares about any of this stuff, but the, the amount of football you want to talk, care about, can talk about with anybody, you can absolutely get lost in I, football land for hours at a time. Do you know how I felt there? Adam, there, I totally agree with you about sort of why I stopped doing Splash. the bit. Um, there's this thing that babies do called dream feeding. I didn't know about this. I'm sure everyone in here with babies is aware of it where while they're still asleep, they will eat out of a bottle, but they'll stay asleep. It's amazing. It's a wonderful thing. So you put the bottle in their mouth and they just kind of go like this. There's like something instinctively that just clicks and they just start sucking on the bottle. Anyways, that's how I feel sometimes when I get asked football questions. It's like, I'm like, like there's like a part of my brain that just clicks on and starts answering it, even if it's. You should, uh, uh, like, you're gonna really regret giving the internet that. 
Which part? <laughs> the, the face. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, yeah, you should stop. You should really stop. Does Mina... <laughs> My eyes are closed, so I can't see how bad Splash. it is. Splash. Does Mina Splash. actually dream about football? I always have dreams about football. And I, I can't even tell you the amount of dreams I've had over the years about the Seahawks losing. I've never had a dream where they've won. It's, it's a nightmare? Yeah, I, well, I guess they're nightmares, yeah. I only have nightmares. Is that weird? <laughs> you only have nightmares <laughs> yes. and they're all about the Seahawks? You you only dream? You, you... No, they're not all about the Seahawks. I have the one where I um, enrolled in a class and I didn't know I enrolled and I find out at the end of the semester probably once every two weeks still. I and have that one all the time. time. 